I want to share some word with you. Open up your Bibles. I want you to go to Acts chapter 1. I want to, we're going to continue on speaking on seed time and harvest. This week the Lord has put a, a burden on my heart to teach on sowing seed and reaping harvest. The Bible says that God gives us the power to create wealth or power to prosper. And I started looking up the definition of prosper. Prosper means to grow strong and healthy. And that is my desire for the church, that everyone is strong and healthy. In every area, spiritually, physically, socially, mentally, and financially. In your marriage, your marriage shall be strong and healthy. In your body, your body shall be strong and healthy. In your relationships, your relationships should be strong and healthy. In your finances, your finance, finances should be strong and healthy. Amen. Say, God has given me power to prosper. And that power is through the seed. It's not something that's a coincidence. It's something that, that you could actually be a part of. God gives you the power, but you have to use your faith to sow seed and reap a harvest. Uh, just gonna, I want to read a couple of scriptures to you as you are finding Acts. In, in uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, it says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. That's in Genesis 8 and 8.22. So is the, is the earth still existing? So there's seed time and harvest. Everybody say seed time and harvest. You are who you are according to the seeds that were sown into your life. And the seeds that you sowed into others. If you sow into your children good things, they will grow up to become good. If you sow bad things into society, society will suffer the consequences. I started thinking about this. Because we all know people that are in our communities that have done very negative things and hurt others because of their negative actions. I know many times there are people that have done some things that have that put wounds in the, in the hearts of the people because of, of something they've done, whether it was something of murder or something of, of just some, some bad things that they, that they were a part of that end up hurting others. And I started thinking, if someone controlled by the devil can do so much harm, how much more the men and women of God controlled by the Holy Ghost can do great things, acts of righteousness that be a blessing in our community. Amen. Many of you might remember some of the things that you have done to harm others. But now God has a hold of you. And God is going to use you to be a blesser. Amen. To be a healer. Amen. And so there's seed time and harvest. And this is in every area. In your marriage, in your finances, in your body, in every area. There's a seed time and harvest. You have the power to prosper. No seed, no harvest. You put seed in, there's going to be a harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to read scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And so the word of God is declaring that we have, that we determine the amount that we will receive. If we sow much, there's going to be a harvest that's going to be much coming back. Amen. If we sow little, there'll be a little harvest coming. If we sow nothing, guess what the harvest is? Nothing. And, and you know, there's a, there is a, a statement, you know, you can count how many seeds are in an apple, but you can't count how many apples are in a seed. And so it must be sown. And when you sow the seed, there's going to be a harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we control the amount that we are going to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. In Galatians 6, verse 7, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And so, how many of you want to receive increase in your, in your life? How many of you want to, want to see increase in, in your finances? Increase in your joy? Increase in your health? Well, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow is what you're going to receive. Amen. Listen, God is not a tease and he's not a liar. He wants to give you the power to prosper. If you want a, the power to prosper, you got to operate the seed. you got to put your faith on the seed. You might not have enough to buy what you desire, but God will give you a seed that will multiply and come back as a harvest that will be more than enough to get what you desire. Amen. 
So God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And then Acts chapter 2, actually Acts chapter 1, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit comes in you. It says the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall receive power. Everybody say power. power. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. The seed of power. The seed of power. Amen. How many of you want to know how to, how to, how to sow seeds of power? Amen. Because you shall receive power. And that power is not ordinary power. It's Holy Ghost power. It's power to heal the sick. It's power to cast out devils. It's power, it's power to walk in victory wherever you go. It's power to see the fruits of the Spirit flow out of your life. So you have a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a prophetic word that speaks into the hearts of others. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The reason why there's a lot of ministers that do not see miracles and signs and wonders is because they do not allow the Holy Spirit to come upon them. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you, you will walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus, and you will have the fruits that Jesus had. Amen. Jesus said, the things that I do, you shall do and greater. But it's not because you were good. It's not because of, of anything that, of you. It's all because of the power of the Holy Ghost that's all upon your life. Amen. And so the word of God says that you shall receive power to be my witness after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Somebody say power. power. And I want to talk to you about the seed of power. The Holy Ghost wants to put his power upon you. In Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a, might, of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit invaded that place, and there was an action that was released. They began to pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, pray in the Holy Ghost. They began to pray in the Holy Ghost as the Spirit was filling them. They began to speak in a new language, in a new tongue. And that's what I want to talk to you about, sowing the seed of power. It's praying in the Spirit. Say, praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is not just for the pastor. Praying in the Spirit is for every believer, every man and woman of God. The Holy Ghost wants to put His power upon you. He wants to release your heavenly language where you can pray in the Spirit. Say, pray in the Spirit. Don't disqualify God and say, no, I can't receive that. Begin to qualify yourself. Say, yes, today is my day. I will pray in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The, the believers are living a halfway life. They come to church. They feel good coming to church. They feel good when people pray for them. But God doesn't want just the ministers to have the power of God. He wants his sons and his daughters to have the power of God. You know, the religions are realizing that without the Holy Ghost power, nothing's real. There's one big denomination that... The numbers in the United States, people will stop going to the churches. But all over the world, wherever they send out missionaries, they, they are full of, the churches are full. And the men and the women that are preaching all over the world are anointed. So they passed a, a ruling that they said, if you are a missionary, you could pray in the Holy Ghost. They didn't say for the, the church of the United States to could pray in the Holy Ghost. But if you are outside of the United States, you could pray in the Holy Ghost. How terrible is that? It's good for them, but us, no, we're going to be conservative. We're going to keep away from that. We don't want none of that, 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 that praying in tongues stuff because that, that just sounds weird. That looks weird. Let me tell you something. This whole world is weird. 
And this whole world needs power. This world needs to know that Jesus is alive. They need to be confronted with the power of God. They need to be confronted with the fire of God. And if you are not the one that's bringing that power, God will raise someone else. God will raise someone else. But don't, don't disqualify yourself. Say, Lord, use me. Put your power upon me. I want Holy Ghost power. Don't want to just talk the, walk, the, the word. I don't just want to read the word. I want to be the word. That when I walk down the street, devils leave. When I speak, the word and the power of God is released. That everywhere I go, goodness and mercy follows me. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time. And listen, I'm a good coach. I'm a good coach. That's, you know, a lot of times as a pastor, I'm a coach. You know, I'm standing at the bottom of that rope saying, get up there. Get up there. Come on, climb that rope. Get to the top. I want to tell you, every one of you should be praying in tongues. You might be three years old. You should be praying in tongues. You might be 80 years old. You should be praying in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, you are sowing the seed of power. When you pray in tongues... You are edifying yourself. It's just you and God. Listen, when I pray in tongues, I'm not praying over you. I'm praying over myself. It's the Holy Ghost helping me pray. I need help. How many of you need help? Well, the Holy Ghost is your helper. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you begin to edify yourself. Where you are weak, he becomes your strength. Where you are lost, he begins to give you the truth. And when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you might be feeling terrible. You might be feeling angry. You might be feeling sad. People might have abused you. People might have rejected you. People might not have, not have even accepted you. But the Holy Ghost is upon you. And your Father has accepted you. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, even if this world has rejected you, heaven has accepted you. When you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you get so caught up with heaven. You get so caught up with the Holy Ghost. You become endued with power. That when you pray in the Holy Ghost and you sow the seeds of prayer, when you rise up from that place of prayer, you rise up with power. You rise up with power. I was listening to a testimony of this one man. He was tired of living a life with no power. And he began to focus on prayer. He knew it was, it was available, but he didn't, he didn't see anybody walking in it. But he knew he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, so he spent time just getting alone, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, not knowing what was going to happen because he had no mentors. He didn't know any, any people that were walking in the Holy Ghost, but he decided, I'm going to walk in the Holy Ghost. So he spent hours in prayer, and one day someone asked him if he would go to a meeting, and he went to the meeting, and he was sitting there, and the preacher started preaching, and it was dry, and it was dead because it was all because of their head. They were speaking out, not out of the Holy Ghost power they were speaking out. But as this man was sitting there, he looked over, and he saw a woman, and it was like an x-ray. He saw in the spirit like an x-ray that this woman had a problem with her hip, and here he was sitting down just amazed because he could see into her life what her problem was, and he looked over her to her and began to speak health over her and that woman was healed amen see that's how the holy ghost works that when you spend time with him he will begin to show you things to be to begin to destroy the works of the devil to begin he, to release healing over others to begin to set the captives free understand this when you pray in the holy ghost you might get down on your knees for a moment but when you rise up you rise up as a champion for the lord to break and destroy all the works of the devil if you believe that, shout amen. amen. And this is for you and this is for me. This is for everyone within the sound of my voice. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are born again, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You might say, well, pastor, I've had many people pray over me for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I've never been able to pray in tongues. See, prayer is just a, a, it's, it's a sign that you've been baptized. It, praying in tongues is the evidence that you've been baptized, amen. If I took a match and I, and I lit it on fire and then I blew it out and you saw the burnt match, the, the burnt match is, a, is just evidence that fire was there. 
When you pray in tongues, it's evidence that the Holy Ghost has baptized you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, had, I struggled with this. I, 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 would, I would think that I had to be extra holy. That I had to do certain things. And, and I was never baptized with the Holy Ghost. But I got, I got alone one day and I really needed to, to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I was alone in my, in my hotel room. And um, I didn't know what to do because I really needed to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So I, I did what every strong Puerto Rican man would do. I called my mama. <laughs> my mother answered the phone and I told her my, my situation. I said I needed the Holy Ghost. And she said, Kevin... You have the Holy Ghost. You need to just step out in faith, and you will see you'll begin to pray in a new tongue. I hung up the phone, and I talked to God. I said, God, my mother says I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost. And so right now, by faith, I accept it in Jesus' name. And then I began to make up words. I knew I was making up words. I began to say, ba, ba, do, do, dee, dee, da, da, untie my bow tie, who stole my humbug. And I was just making up words. But I, but I said, you know, I'm by myself in this hotel room. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I want God to see my faith. I'm not going to be like the rest of the disciples dry in the boat. I'm going to walk on the water with Jesus. Even if I fall down, I'm going to get back up. I'm going to keep on trusting God. And I kept on speaking, Baba, Dodo, DD, Da, Da, Dodo. But as I was speaking, the Holy Ghost began to help me. And I was there, Baba, Dodo, Shodo, Bototo. That was different. That was different. It, my inner man started feeling like it was, it was lifting up. It was coming alive. And I said, can I do that again? I was like, wow. This is amazing. And I kept on going. I said, wow. My tongue was like a machine gun. I wonder, can I go slow? Can I go fast? I knew I received it. After I had prayed, I knew I received it. After I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I prayed in tongues all night. When I woke up in the morning, instead of me running away from the devil, I began to look for him. Where are you, devil? I'm ready to heal the sick. I'm ready to cast out devils. I'm ready to preach the gospel. Your life will change when you sow the seed of prayer. Prayer produces power. Every one of you should be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Look at me, men of God, women of God, those that are watching online. You should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Don't let anyone keep you back from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is here. Jesus said, I must go, but I'm sending you another, and that's the Holy Ghost. Why would you keep yourself away from the Holy Ghost? Get rid of your religion. Get rid of your tradition. Step on into the power of God through the Holy Ghost. I want everyone to stand up on your feet. I've preached it. I've demonstrated it. Now it's time for you to receive the Holy Ghost. And receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If you are already baptized in the Holy Ghost, this morning you're going to receive a fresh feeling in Jesus' name. I want everyone to put your hand on your belly. Oh, yes, this is real. Oh, yes, you're going to get it. Someone says, they just invited me to church. I didn't know where I was going to. Oh, you, you're going to get more than what you bargained for. Amen. You're not going to be the same in Jesus' name. I want you to close your eyes and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Forgive me of all my sins. Come inside my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, fill me. Thank you, Lord, for my salvation. I believe I'm a son of God. Right now, I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, you promised to send the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Baptize me with power. And evidence of speaking in tongues. I believe I will speak in my heavenly language. And by faith, I will speak 
now in Jesus mighty name. Now just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, everyone. Come on, church, lift up your voice before God. Even if you feel like you're just making noise, make that noise. Watch how the Holy Ghost will help you. The children are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning. The older are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning. Receive right now in Jesus' name. Keep on praying. You need power. You need power. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Now give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Some of you are going to be all service, just praying in tongues. It's okay. You're not weird. You're welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise to God. Praise God. Now you need to work on your gift. You have, you have to work on that Holy Spirit prayer. Amen. When you go home, you get alone with God. You lock yourself in the room and just say, I'm going to have an encounter with God. I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And watch how when you rise up, you're going to see things different. The fruits of the Spirit are going to begin to operate in your life. And you're going to walk in the authority and the power of God forever in Jesus' name. If you believe that, give God the, the loudest praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah.